I strongly encourage you to go play this game if you haven't already, because this is an obligatory spoiler alert warning. Now, in Life is Strange, you play as Max, a girl in high school that learns she has the ability to bend time. Throughout the game, she goes on a bunch of crazy adventures, solving mysteries, reconnecting with her old friend, and getting put into extremely terrible situations that push the spectrum of human emotion to their limit, mainly sadness. But we aren't here to talk about all that fun stuff, we're here to talk about this goofy looking kid, right here. So let me paint the scene for you. You're an 18 year old girl who just learned that she can control time, using it to save what turns out to be your best friend from being shot in the stomach by triggering a fire alarm. Stay with me. After telling the principal what happened like a responsible student you walk outside desperately hoping to make sense of what's happening but just as you try to collect your thoughts you get a text this is our introduction to warren graham he acts as a story beat moving you back down to reality this dude's been blowing up your phone he starts talking about a flash drive he let you borrow and he's anxiously waiting to see you again so you spend the next half hour retrieving this flash drive which turned out to be an arduous task mind you that they make sure to point out that max sees warren as a friend and goes out of their way to establish establish this whole one-sided affection situation very clearly even with all the other nonsense going on. So you go meet up with him in the parking lot and of course he goes in for the hug, baller move, I'm loving the effort, but that's a rookie mistake. Throughout the conversation he continues to spit some game talking about how sensitive he is and showing off his 1993 Ticonderoga shit can, then just ever so slightly slips in the idea going to the movies together right before getting the absolute shit kicked out of him while he tries tries to save Max from Nathan. You know, the kid who was wielding a firearm in the school no more than an hour ago. This whole scene is set up to show him white knighting this girl, both figuratively by forcing an armchair therapy session and literally by dead ass engaging in combat to protect her. To Warren's credit, you gotta respect the commitment. After that fiasco, you chill with your best friend Chloe for a bit and he will continue to text you throughout the night showing you how messed up his face is and pridefully donning his white knight title, even making a joke about his ability to text you consistently. And all I could think about is, wow, this Warren character is such a nice guy. I have no romantic interest in him whatsoever, but boy, he's so nice. So once all the madness is over, Max has had a long day and goes back to her dorm room for bed. Now, I'm not able to take credit for finding this minute detail in the game, but when you wake up and look outside witnessing what a beautiful day it is, you could see Warren creeping in the corner of the building. It's weird. So Max goes to take a shower afterwards, and I'm over here hoping he doesn't open the curtain, but instead you run into Kate, this poor soul who was drugged at a party and now has a sex tape floating around the school. By the way, this is your final spoiler alert warning. Now if you talk to Alyssa about Warren, she starts warning Max about Brooke. Um, excuse me? Who the f fuck is Brooke? You mean this chick whose room is 10 feet away from mine? The number on my door is 219. Hers is 220. Is this boy just working his way through the whole dormitory? Oh, hang on a second. Dude, her hair looks so nice. But once you start talking to her, she gets all sassy like, ooh, I know stuff about space rocks and Warren should like me more. Listen here, Baruch. You obviously know Warren has a thing for me. Like, you're being friend zoned by the guy in the friend zone. That's gotta feel so harsh. Pull yourself together, girl. You deserve better. Anyway, Max goes outside and of course Warren is still standing at the corner of the building and he's all like, oh, I'm just standing here for no reason and by the way, I saved you, so you want to go on a date? And this is where I had a decision to make. Here in front of me, I have this sweet, caring guy who's always there for me and wants nothing more than to spend more time together. And this is my chance to finally give a nice guy a fair shot he deserves and maybe even find some closure for myself using this game to live vicariously through Warren as he gets to start a relationship with the girl of his dreams. And to tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, I said no. Like, it wasn't even a difficult choice to make. Out of everything that has happened in the game up until this point, Warren is far and away the least interesting character. I'm sure his intentions are good, but I would rather do literally anything besides go see a movie with him. Just five minutes ago, I had my dorm room broken into, and now I'm getting death threats. But Warren is still trying to force himself into the situation because he has no idea what kind of difficulties Max has to face on what seems to be an hourly basis. And sure, it's an understatement to say that life is strange, tends to exaggerate and blow things out of proportion, but I've realized that I don't like being a girl in high school that has a stereotypical self-proclaimed white knight constantly following me around asking me on a date every time he sees me. Actually, it's really fucking annoying. I wish I could turn back time before I ever met this pathetic excuse for a gentleman caller who literally lurks around every corner waiting for me. But you can't say that to the kid. I mean, look at him. He 
he's trying so hard. So I did the best I could. I told him that I'm not interested in seeing Planet of the Apes, and even though I appreciate his concern that it would be best if he kept to himself. In turn, he jokingly calls me a damn dirty human and says how he's gonna take Brooke instead, which honestly, good for the both of them. I'm proud. Excellent choice having a backup plan, Warren, but to be real, I don't think you're the type of dude that should be juggling two women in the first place. So Max goes about her day, and he texts you, making sure that you don't want to go to the movies with him, then once you go back to school, he wants you to meet him in the science lab. So you mosey on down to help him mix chemicals together, and if you choose the right ones, then Max gets a free hug. Yay! Oh, and Brooke just so happens to be there. See, here's another thing. This idiot Warren guy is so infatuated with Max that he doesn't see that there's a perfectly good person who's shown interest standing right next to him. So while he might whine and pout about getting what he wants, this foolish kid doesn't even know how fortunate he is. So Max is about to start class, but then some crazy shit happens where Kate, this poor soul, is threatening to commit suicide, which is the saddest scene in the history of gaming. I don't want to see a bunch of comments arguing about this, because nothing even compares. So I'm a mess, okay? Max can't catch a break, she's witnessed a lifetime of tragedy in the last 48 hours. This leads to a sit-down with the world's worst principal, who finally wants to have a conversation because something seems fishy. But at the end of the day, Warren is still there looking to have a heart to heart. Of course Super Warren comes in trying to fix everything, telling me it's all gonna be fine because I'm amazing. Listen here Warren, I got Nathan waiting to kill me, I got a drug dealer that I threatened with a gun waiting to kill me, I have mysterious time traveling powers which are not only giving me intracranial hemorrhages but also causing nature to shit its pants, Victoria is still being a bitch, I still haven't handed in my class project, my room is a mess, my plant is dying, and on top of all of that I've just had to witness Kate, this poor soul, jump off a fucking roof because I didn't know what her favorite Bible verse was. So yeah, this is your moment. Swoop in and console me because I know you've been all too eager for this sign of affection. In fact, the worse things are going for me, the better you're able to make yourself look. Funny how that works, isn't it, Warren? The extent of this man's love knows no bounds. And this is more than just a crush. He's turned into a loose cannon. And if you don't believe me, that's fantastic because later Max is getting ready to blow up the principal's office. Oh, my apologies. The world's worst principal's office. So so she hits up Warren to send her blueprints to a pipe bomb. And he fucking does it! Not only that, but bright and early the next day he wants to go to the drive-in. Listen, friends fellow denizens of the internet. If a romantic interest, scratch that, if anyone asks you for blueprints to a pipe bomb, just say nah fam. And if they text back, go throw your phone in a river. So after more incredibly off the wall shit happens, I'm at a point where I have really important stuff to do. Like there's a task at hand, immediately. But Warren is oblivious to the whole situation hitting on you at the party and wanting you to take a picture. I mean yeah, thanks for beating up Nathan for me earlier today, that was a real baller ass move, a white night power play if I've ever seen one, but I gotta go. Besides, this morning you were saying how hot my best friend sounded. If you're such a self-proclaimed white knight, then stop being such a hoe. Okay, you know what? I think it's time. Let me be brutally honest about Warren Graham, okay? And try to take it on the chin, buddy, because this is some real shit. As Max, I've been to a countless number of timelines. Somewhere I get an answer wrong in class, somewhere I spill a cup on a book, another where you end up dating Stella Hill. I've seen you fucking explode in in a diner. In fact, I've been to an alternate reality where my best friend is paralyzed, begging me to euthanize her, and you weren't even a contact in my phone. But there is not a rewind I could use, there is not a picture I can look at, and there's no dimensional rift I can jump into that would bring me to a reality where Max and Warren end up together. It's just not happening. The fact I played this game three times and still chose this kid as a topic is an insult to the main story. He's an idiot. Max tells him about her superpowers and he's all like, duh, I I always knew you were special. Even if I turn back time and actually accept his invitation to the movies, he says that he has to cancel with Brooke first. Are you fucking kidding me right now? After all I've been through, after watching you anxiously peek around the corner, staring in the window, waiting to ask me on a date, you have the balls to make plans with Brooke first? Maybe if he showed half the attention to Brooke as he did Max, then he could finally be happy, but no. That's not good enough for you, is it, Warren? You always want what you can't have, Warren. Warren. In fact, if you had it your way, you would probably take us both to the movies, wouldn't you, Warren? The absolute best case scenario for this man is he gets one kiss with Max near the end to which he then immediately tries to say I love you to her. But it's okay. She knows. She always knew. Everyone in Arcadia Bay already knew. So this brings me back to what I was trying to say in the first place. 
men, women, any other gender you might identify as. If you have a crush on someone and they don't seem interested, just take the hint and move on. It's way easier said than done, but it will save you a lot of trouble. Let me put it to you this way. If everything works out perfect, then you successfully talk yourself into a relationship that starts out drastically one-sided. How do you think that will feel two years from now? You know what makes Romeo and Juliet a good story about romance? The fact that they loved each other. It wasn't 90 pages of Romeo trying to sell himself like a used car to Juliet while she patiently explains again how they're just friends. Warren is an excellent example of someone trying to force their way into being the main character of somebody else's story. And there's nothing wrong with being friends, but if you're just gonna be friends with someone, then actually be friends with them instead of using it as a tool to further your advances. And look, I've been outlandishly mean to this character. He's not a bad guy. He's not evil. He's just an awkward kid with a crush on Max, and he's trying his best to work his way around one of the most complex situations a young person faces. And that's loving someone who just doesn't love you back. And honestly, most people have been Warren at one point or another, whether you'd like to admit it or not. Brooke is Warren's Warren. I've been Warren. Some of you might be Warren and not even realize it yet. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't let your entire world revolve around someone to the point where it becomes an obligation to have you around, especially if they berate you with insults like I did to Warren in this video. Sometimes, as painful as it may seem, the most logical answer is to focus on another love interest, or find some type of hobby that captures your attention, or even better, set some time aside and learn to love yourself. If you enjoy me talking about various topics in video games such as this one, feel free to subscribe, but most importantly, have a nice day.